This episode is brought to you by America's Rehab Campus. Get on the road to recovery with the best rehab in beautiful Arizona. Dial 1-833-272-7342. That's 1-833-ARC-REHAB. Stress nothing. We're already recording. We can, you know, cut all this out if we need to. Okay. So let's go back to the go back to our little stuff right here. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Man, good morning. It, it is such a it's such a beautiful, beautiful morning. This is the very first episode of the Artcast. We're coming here from uh, from our boy Matt's office right now. <laughs> um, let me do a little quick introduction. My name is Buddha. I'm the recreational coordinator here at America's Rehab Campus. I've been here for a few years. This is like a home to me. I love this place. I've been blessed to work with amazing clients, amazing people. I get to see miracles happen on a daily basis. God is definitely good. You know, I don't wanna I don't wanna keep the introduction too much on myself. I wanted to introduce to you some of the amazing people I got sitting next to me. To my right, right here. Oh, my man, my man, the wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, 10 years. In the NFL, three Super Bowls, grew up right here in Arizona. My man, Vance Johnson. Good morning. What's going on, bro? Man, I'm so excited to be here, brother. I'm just so blessed. And thank you so much. This is going to be an amazing podcast. And this is our first one. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I also want to introduce to you guys the voice. <laughs> Wait until you hear <laughs> Miss Michaela. She is our marketing director here at ARC. Miss Michaela, good morning. How good are morning. you? Good morning. Doing good. All right. All right. It's beautiful, man. We're, we're here together. Um, hopefully, this is going to be the first of many you know, doing all these amazing podcasts, being able to talk about, you know, people's testimonies, people coming in here, being able to speak about everything that they've, you know, gone through in their life. And I'm very, very blessed for our very first guest that we have here to introduce to you guys, uh, somebody that I got a lot of love for. He's my uncle. I'm just going to say that straight up because I love this dude. I'm proud of it. I'm proud that he's family. I've I've seen so much uh, change in this man's life. I got to give it up to him. His name is Ray and Ray is our intensive outpatient program supervisor. Wow. Good morning, Ray. How you doing, brother? Good morning. Blessed yeah. to be here. Yeah, you doing good? I'm doing great. Thank you. Oh man, this is this is fun. I was I was thinking about this all night. I was like just like overstressing, and it's so weird. You finally put on all the equipment and stuff, and it's like just be normal. You know what I mean? <laughs> How are you guys feeling? Man, we were doing just. I'm fantastic, brother. Yeah, you doing good? Just doing great. Cause it's all about leading people to that hope. So this is about recovery. Yes, sir. I can't wait to jump into his story because this brother right here is just amazing. Absolutely. absolutely. I think he's known me since he was a kid too, by the way. Oh, yeah, you did? Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, yep. we're going to yeah. get into that? Yeah. Um, as far as everything goes, man, with Ray, your story is incredible, bro. Your story is definitely incredible. And, and before you go into it, if I can just say you are one of the reasons why I'm in this field still. You know, mm-hmm. uh, honestly, I can honestly say that, dude, because, you know, being able to rekindle a relationship from way back in the day, dude, and seeing the growth in you, man, it's it's actually, uh, it's giving me a lot of hope too, made me see things a lot better, it's giving me a lot of, a lot of gratitude just for God and just for the blessings, man, like it's, it's so good to see yes. you. So why don't you take us in to your story a little bit? So my name is Ray Benitez and I um, grew up here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, uh, childhood was single parent, you know, I didn't see much of my dad, so that led me to always trying to get away with more and more and more each mm-hmm. time. So um, I uh, I didn't realize this till I was an adult, but I, I think I suffered from PTSD, yeah. from a, a sexual abuse event mm-hmm. that happened when I was a child, and I think that's what spun my life uh, out of direction, you know, growing up. Yeah, that's hard. That's amazing, brother. You know, I got a saying, transparency is transformation. And I've had a right. chance to spend a lot of time with you, and so I just really appreciate how transparent you are in offering hope to people because your testimony is leading so many people to the light. Right. And I know it's a, it's a taboo subject that a lot of people, you know, maybe out of shame or guilt are afraid to talk about, but I think it's an important one in, yeah. in this field because so many people that face addiction have some kind of trauma that they yeah. Are not willing to share at times, you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I was talking to a few clients and we were I kind of made the analogy of a band-aid. You can't keep a band-aid on the cut and expect it to heal. You can't. You got to open it up to the elements. And I think being able to talk about the healing 
Yeah. You know, it, it's it's super important, man. So why don't you bring us into a little bit more of, of your story? Well, you know, I was, like I said, single family. I was, um, I think after that, that one time traumatic event. And, and by the way, that event, um, my next door neighbor was another little kid that I think uh, all the kids in the neighborhood, you know, suffered a, a, as a victim at least one time or another. Yeah. But one of the kids disappeared. And he was found weeks later, you know, here in Tucson on Ina and in, in the freeway. And um, so that, that kind of scared us. And, it, and it, we grew up in a lot of fear. No, he passed away. He, yeah, he was, he was killed. And um, that was Tucson's first unsolved homicide. And it's still unsolved to this day. Wow. wow. So um, just the fear of growing up and, and trying to hide all that that happened. Um, I get to high school and, and it's ironic that Mr. Vance Johnson is sitting next to me here because um, in high school I excelled in sports, and one of the sports was football. And, and, you know, us being a few years apart, most of us were just aspiring to be like Vance Johnson <laughs> in, our, in our high school years. But because of that whole negativity as a child, you know, my self-esteem was, you know, not, not – like a normal yeah. self-esteem and I just never felt good enough even though I got you know a couple of letters from colleges I'd rip them up and I oh, wow. never wow. saw myself as good enough to compete in I, a I didn't know that, that man level. yeah wow wow so then so you grew up you know uh going through all of that type of pain internally that you were experiencing what about when you got older started having kids what happened there well I think in, in, in those high school years, that's when I started experimenting with, with drugs. Okay. And the popularity that came with it, you know, being at all the parties, being at all the, you know, the big social events, you know, I was trying to use that as a, as a mask to cover what happened. Well, if you see this, maybe you won't see what happened back yeah. then. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, the use became more severe and severe until I really spiralled out of control. Yeah. Wow. All right. And that's even common today. Especially mm -hmm. with uh, the trauma that the country is going through these days, a lot of kids are really suffering. And I'm hearing about a lot of kids even having to go to the hospital emergency room because of different mental illness that they're suffering with. A lot of it has to do with, you know, cell phones and stuff like that. But yeah, drugs man. are a big key. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing I will say for, for like, you know, younger adults or um, is if something traumatic happened, tell somebody. Yes. Talk mm -hmm. about it. Because I think uh, as an adult now and looking back, if I would have, uh, you know, maybe shared that with somebody, I could have um, began a path to a, to a different form of healing. But um, internalizing and, and holding it in is dangerous for, I think it puts a person at higher risk to use substances in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, it's the amount of growth, bro, it's, it's crazy. So uh, why don't you dive a little deeper? What happened in your 30s? So... Um, from that event, um, later after speaking to uh, uh, several doctors that examined me, you know, I uh, I uh, I started using a lot of uh, cocaine and amphetamines uh, to stay awake. And what was happening is my my son was getting to the age of where the age I was when this uh, event happened yeah. back then. So they said I was suffering from um, transferred identity where I was wow. projecting my bad things that happened in my life onto my son, and I was trying to protect him from something that didn't exist, yeah. was existing mm -hmm. in my head. So I was becoming more paranoid, and I was using more substances, drinking more. I was, you know, running around with, with weapons in my hand, and, um, you know, that day something bad happened. I was, um, I went into a drug-induced psychosis, which in, in this field, in the recovery field, I think uh, many know what... Um, it means, you know, hallucinating. Yeah. And I started responding to those hallucinations. Oh, man. And I couldn't tell what was real and what was not. And I started um, fire mishandling a weapon. And um, unfortunately, um, uh, a friend of mine's family was struck with one of the bullets. And they did not survive that. So. Wow. And so let's go even a little bit deeper. And so where did that lead you to? So, I mean, I was... I, I I was in shock at first. I didn't even know what I was sitting in jail for. Um, when wow. when I came out of that psychosis, I was I was wondering what had happened, and I was sitting in the county jail, arrested for a first degree murder charge. Wow! And that's how transparent, guys. This you know, this brother is. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. I was crushed because I you know I wasn't raised. Um, you know anybody that knows me knows I couldn't hurt nobody. You know yeah. normal, but. That's what drugs and, and alcohol do, and, and especially when you use them 
um, to the point of, of you lose control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I definitely lost it. And, 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 you know, it was, it was devastating to wake up to, wow. to that charge. Yeah. And I, I could just imagine, man, some of the things, you know, I, I remember, you know, and I hope you don't mind me sharing, but I remember as a little kid, you know what I'm saying? And, and, uh, and hearing what had happened and thing. And of course I was so young. I didn't, I didn't really get quite a grasp on it, you know, but, um, I know, I know you, uh, you, you were, you were gone for quite a bit. You were gone for, how long were you gone for? Almost 20 years. Almost 20 years, yeah. you know, and, uh, I'm sure you experienced a lot of, a lot of heartache being away from family, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I want to, I don't want to go too deep into all of that type of stuff, man. I really want to, I want to focus on the healing part of it, but mm -hmm. I, I wanted to, um, to let you know a little bit of, of my story when it came to seeing you here. And I was going to say, because you guys are family, I'd love to hear your side and how mm -hmm. that affects so you. So I, I got hired here and my boy, Tony, uh, what up, Tony, if you're out there listening, you know, <laughs> I got hired here as a BHT and, uh, one day looking through our system and I see my uncle that he was here. Wow. Right. And, uh. I, I always he was such a cool cat growing up. I got I got home videos of me and my uncle, man. And just, he he's just he he's good looking dude. Always out there dressed up to the you know dressed up man all the time looking good. <laughs> and I saw him and uh, I went up to him and I just I just reintroduced myself to him and you know I was hoping he remembered me and, and he was so sweet man from the beginning just super loving super caring. You know he came through the program and it just it it's amazing. I'll, I'll let you talk about that part of it, man. But I just remember. Seeing you, that's been one of the greatest blessings of my life is being able to reestablish that connection, man. So why don't you talk about when you started coming here to ARC? So I was released from the Department of Corrections in 2016. And, um, of course, you know, I thought things were going to be better. But um, actually, my addiction got worse in prison. It, it went from alcohol and cocaine to meth and heroin and, um, and came home and thought that I had control of my use, which... Every addict knows we don't have control of our use. No, we don't. I tested myself and and quickly um, spiraled out of control again. And um, and I was I was disappointed. I was disgusted with myself. You know all the things I dreamed about in prison. Um, you know getting a job, having a family, providing. Um, we're just going down the toilet again. So um, of course I picked up new charges, and um, it was either you go get some treatment or you go back to prison, you go home, you know, and, yeah. and I, I wanted to live the rest of my life, you know, and yeah, just, mm -hmm. uh, with some kind of normalcy, you know. And, and in that moment was like that a no brainer decision or was that like something where you were like, wow, like I've got to actually think about, do I want to do the work to recover or do I want to like keep living in this? Like, was that something that crossed your mind? Absolutely. I, I mean, I was, I was tired. I was, um, I just I couldn't figure out why I could not stop using substances. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't understand the the addiction component and um, you know how powerful it, it, it can keep you down. You know, and 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 I and I you know I walked in the the doors of Ark and I I just said I really need some help. You know, and and you know it was the first time that I walked into a place where I wasn't judged. You know, they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, use any of my background as a as a deterrent saying no we can't help you because of this they just said they you have a drug problem yes come in we will help you that's awesome and that was amazing for me to i was like wow they really welcoming me here that's you know cool. mm -hmm. yeah. so you know listening to your story i can just think about even my past and the things that i had to go through after my nfl career and i can relate to the things that you went through where you ha finally had to make a decision that i'm ready to get help yeah mm -hmm. so thank you for that yeah. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So you walked in through those doors. Uh, uh, did you get clean your first time here? Uh, no, I actually, it, it took, it, uh, it was the third time, you know, I had, um, right. and if you're listening, Roxanne, Madeira, Ray, Elijah, you know, the, the, the people I love, you know, that, that are in my close knit circle, my girl, my stepdaughter, my son, and my grandson, I didn't want to lose everything that I had gained in that little bit of time. And I knew I would have, I was I was gonna lose it all again, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and um, I just uh, I wanted I didn't want that I wanted more, you know. Yeah. Well, that's great. You know, what's really interesting when you were sharing that I wouldn't even talk to anybody when I was in treatment unless they had relapsed several times and had to come back into treatment so I can know that it was possible to get clean by coming back, and that's the reason why we don't judge people that relapse. Mm -hmm. So thanks for that transparency. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, for real. And I think that third time, too, the just the diversity of employees that they have here, you know, the therapists, the, even in reception, you know, the treatment that I got walking in this door. Um, I didn't have a job. I, I had, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was, it was like a red carpet was rolled out and said, yes, come in here. We want to help you. And so it, it really changed my mind as instead of isolating and holding everything in, I was just able to come in here and spill my guts to, mm -hmm. to the trained people that they had here willing to listen, you know? Yeah. And it was, uh, it was the beginning of, of my healing, you know? That's cool, man. That's yeah. real cool. And, and it's, it's so cool to like, to hear it from your perspective, because I remember being here and then, you know, seeing you in detox. I love you, but we know how detox is. Everyone's not feeling good. They're not looking <laughs> their best, you know, and you were you were you were out cold. I don't even know if you remember me coming up to you, bro. But, I, you know, and then you came to the residential program. I just gave you a big hug. I was like, mm -hmm. hey, man, it's good to see you. And, uh, you know, it just the growth from there. It was like you were like one of those weeds in caliche dirt, bro. You just took <laughs> off. You just kept growing and kept growing. And you you went through the IOP program, too, I believe. Right. At the time, the I program did. We had. You know, residential. We had um, all these different things that I hadn't never experienced. We had uh, Tony Red House with oh, yeah. the spiritual meditation. We had yoga. We had you, you know, doing our music and and mm -hmm. and sharing what, you know, a song meant to us in our addiction or in our healing and. It was just um, it was just a, a good positive process for me to really understand myself and yeah. to let go of that that past and and realize that we all have a purpose and and I think here is where I first realized that I I was gaining my purpose. Yeah. That's super that's cool. Yeah. You know, there's one thing that you shared that I thought was so important. When people go to treatment, it's not just going to treatment that's going to get you clean. You have to be very almost just humility and broken and mm -hmm. open about that when you talk to your therapist and the different people that are helping you with while you're in treatment, not just showing up to be to get clean, but literally opening up, like you said, so that you can start learning that in my humility, I can start to grow now. Yes. And I mean, you know, as a, as a man, you know, I was, I was afraid to share, you know, mm -hmm. people see me cry. And, yeah. and I think that third time I came to ARC, I, yeah. I didn't care who saw me cry. I didn't, I wasn't here for them. I was here for me. Yeah. And and th they were willing to give me that support, but I had to get out of that shell and kind of lay my cards on the table. Thank and I'm so, so thankful that, that I did. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. it just reminded me of time when I was in treatment. That was the first time that I people asked me, my therapist said, who do you want to apologize to, Mr. Johnson? And I said to the son that I had that died, that was my fault that he got killed. And so that was my first time. So thank you so much, man. Th I mean, your transparency mm -hmm. is just amazing. It's going to offer so much hope to people listening to this podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. And I remember, man, growing up in my teens, like uh, Little Ray, you know, your boy is one of my, my closest cousins. We were working out together and stuff. And then when seeing you, dude, it's like it's a spitting image, a spitting <laughs> image, dude, you know. And then like coming through the program, just the smile getting bigger every single day. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it's like he, he's got his truck. He's doing his thing. He's looking good. Swole as always. You know what I mean? And then he was gone for a while and I didn't hear from Ray for a long time. But I knew he was doing good. Mm -hmm. Let's fast forward a little bit. Hope you don't mind me saying this story. We're going to fast forward. I was sharing um, office with the clinical director at the time. And guess who was coming in for a job interview? My man right here, my man Ray. Yeah. And it was super cool because uh, when he was doing the interview, you, you got a phone call. The, like uh, like a, a crazy phone call out of nowhere, right? Out of nowhere, yeah. And who was that phone call from? So I was uh, sitting here uh, getting an interview, and I got a call from uh, my probation officer. And it was actually that day that I had an interview here. They were actually releasing me from probation early, nine months early. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And God's like, glory, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you answered my question because I was getting ready to say, this sounds like a God thing. So even though from your childhood, you know, and your uncle, the Absolutely. very place where you guys are both being used by God now to offer hope, he knew before we even knew that it was going to happen this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. I think so, man. I'm, I'm so proud of you, brother. And, and I'm Thank so you. grateful. It's an honor to have you here not only as an employee and to like to see the growth that you have now, like with the IOP program, our IOP program has been just blossoming. Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, every Wednesday I run the uh, community meeting. So we have all of the men from residential and there's someone who does the women group, but you know, we have so many dudes and uh, every week uh, one of the therapists here will, the, they'll bring like two or three speakers to uh -huh. come in from mm -hmm. the IOP program. And every single person that we have is always talking about how, you know, Ray, you know, Ray handles his business like yeah. he's about his business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the the things that they go deep into when they're talking about their recovery, they're like, you know, we don't deal with these one question answers like you got to be able to dig deep because that's the mm -hmm. only way you're going to get healing. 
And I mean, like you said, it's it's all through God, man. Because I feel like ever since you've been here, the program has just been doing amazing, man. And I'm very proud of you. And it's it's just an honor, dude. It's cool to be mm-hmm. able to sit here and hear your story like this, yeah. especially yes. with with two amazing people. You know what I mean? And when yeah. I was offered the opportunity to become the ambassador here at Arc, which I was so excited about, I actually one of the first people that I met was this brother right here. Yeah, that's yeah. yes. oh, cool. Right. I only had known the owner who just really cares so much about the clients that are coming in. And then when they introduced me to the very first person. It was this brother right here who introduced me to all of the uh, IOP clients, and I had a chance to share my testimony. That's I awesome. Just, I, mm-hmm. He just cared so much about them. It was just amazing. And I didn't know his testimony at that time. No. No. Yeah. Man. Yes. I think one of the coolest things that I've experienced, because I'm on the flip side, I'm not in recovery. I have a loved one that is. But one of the things that I think maybe I just had wrong in my head is that when you're coming to 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 get your life back on track, coming to rehab, that you're kind of at rock bottom. And then uh, now that I've been here and I've watched, I actually feel like you're kind of at the beginning. You're yes. at like this new That's point cool. in your life where you can grow. And it's like just just your story alone just proves that, that it's like even it, even though it took three times, like you did it, like you got through it. And now look at your impacting more people that are coming through. And I think that's one of the things that has been so cool for me to see hands on because I've been much more behind the scenes. But coming forward is getting to see that when you come here, it's not that you've hit rock bottom. You're actually on your way up. You're wow. yeah. already hit the rock bottom and you've that's deep. grown. That's and I deep. think that's really cool. I like that. Absolutely. So so how's your life now? Now, I, I mean, um. After completing this program and then, um, you know, being offered a job to to work at this facility, first of all, but to the IOP program, which I hold very dearly. Thank you, Matt, for that. Matt Shetler, (laughs) appreciate that. Um, You know, just um, I think um, just allowing my past to help uh, bring input into the program and help mold it it's, it's trial and error and and i think we grow this program changes you know daily on a yeah. daily basis mm-hmm. sometimes and i just um i feel very blessed and lucky to be a part of um other new people coming in so that i can share you know all that experience and and we, we have a really good program right now um i think it's probably one of the best in the country really yeah mm-hmm. this outpatient program is um it's it's just taking off and um i just feel blessed to to be a part of it and, and contribute, you know. And look how much Art cares about their clients to the mm-hmm. point where they offered a brother that was clean a job so that he can be that hope that people need. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned that because this is probably one of the first jobs that I don't have to hide anything about myself. You know, I can mm-hmm. come and, and just be me. And, um, you know, I don't have to be superficial. I can just come and share and, and just help people heal. I think mm-hmm. that's... And let me get real transparent. And this, this is not to talk about other programs that around the country are bad, <laughs> but a lot, of, a lot of programs just send you away and say, thanks, we'll see you after you relapse. They offered you a job. Mm-hmm. How long after you left treatment were you offered that opportunity? Um, I would say within, within a year. Wow. You know, yeah, that's amazing. That's coming amazing. To, to the aftercare program that we have here and, um, you know, just... Um, you know, this is my sacred ground. You know, this yeah. is where yeah. if, if it can fix me, it can fix anybody. <laughs> I think. Mm-hmm. And That's did you call awesome. them looking for a job, or did they reach out to you? They reached out to me. Wow! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. That's yeah. cool, right? That mm-hmm. was that was awesome, and and you know, and, and everything changed after that. You know, my self esteem, my self worth. Um, you know, I I wake up looking forward to come to work now. You know, mm-hmm. I, I know most people don't like to go to work in the morning, but you know, I'm here early. I'm here mm-hmm. late. And I, I just, um, things couldn't be better for me right now. That's yes, good, he man. is. Yes, he is. Wow. That's that's amazing, man. It, it, it's so cool, dude, just to see that grow. So m- my question to you would be for anybody who's listening right now, right? Mm-hmm. For anybody who may be on the fence, they, for whatever reason, they don't feel like they're ready. What do you think are some of the necessary steps a person has to take to actually be able to get through this addiction issue? I think they have to be... Well, first, they have to be ready, you know, because nobody is going to do this journey for you. This mm-hmm. is all you right here. If mm-hmm. nobody can help you unless you want to help yourself. Mm-hmm. You know? Does that yeah. make sense? Absolutely. Um, and, and just trying, you know, I got to the point where I was looking at myself and I thought every time Ray does what Ray wants to do, Ray ends up in trouble. Mm. And um, I have to try something different, you know. Um, 
I, I was ready to change. I just didn't know how to change. And I needed, I needed a professional facility mm -hmm. to teach me some tools, you know, basic tools, but, um, you just have to apply them, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, in working in this field now, so many relapses happen because you stopped watering the plant, you know, you stop applying the coping skills and techniques that you learn. And, and it's just a matter of, of desire, you know, yeah. and just like Michaela said, you have to reach rock bottom before you're ready to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Wow. I, I always think of it. And this is one thing that I've told clients before. It's like, you don't ever, you're never going to get to that point in your life where you're perfect, where everything mm. is going good. It's like constant maintenance, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. And the only thing I can think of is poor Victor and them always going around handling <laughs> business, right? This place is never perfect. There's always a light that needs to be fixed. There's always something that needs to be fixed. And I think whenever we get to that point where we feel like we've got it all figured out, yeah. that's a red flag. You yeah. know, we got to mm -hmm. constantly work on ourselves. Like you said, constantly watering the plant, yep. you mm -hmm. know, having that gratitude, getting into the Bible, you know, getting right with God, getting right with yourself. I was mm -hmm. getting ready to say, and be, being a man of faith, even the apostle Paul said, not that I have attained all of this, but I press on to that which Christ has called me. Yes, sir. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that just because you got clean, this, you're going to be clean for the rest of your life, but you have to keep pressing forward so that you can hold on to that recovery. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Does anybody have any any other questions? Anything you guys want to talk about? I'm just in tears just listening to how your transparency, man, because mm -hmm. that is so much transformation. Thank yeah, you, man. Thank Most you. definitely. Yeah. I am. Uh, I'm super excited. We're going to have to get this out to everyone in IOP. We got to figure ways to get this out, man. I mean, it's, it's, people need to hear your testimony, mm -hmm. bro. And, and it's crazy because, you know, I remember before you got here, you know, we would get clients in here from, you know, prison system, things like that. And it was always very hard to kind of relate. It's like, hey, man, you've been, mm -hmm. you, you know, I got three years. I got to do this. I got to do that. Like, you don't know what it's like, yeah. you know, but I, I like to think of it as like you're able to see it from the perspective because of everything that you've experienced, because of being away from your family for so long, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, having to go through all of that. It's like there, there's I feel like there's nothing anyone can tell you. That's that you're going to be like, nah, man, like you just got to handle your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And the clients, you know, they have nothing but love and respect for you, too. Yeah, they really yeah. do. And because of that, I've actually talked to some of the clients and a lot of them are saying, I'd love to be the part of this podcast one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we're going to stay in contact with them even after they leave treatment, not just because of the podcast, but because we care about them. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Well, and I think one of the cool things that I've learned from this, because I got to hear your story for the first time today, was you provide the come as you are ability to people because you you were accepted so you're going to accept them too and I think that that is one of the biggest things in treatment because I think so oftentimes when you don't understand what it is to be addicted to something you don't understand that it's actually the substance not the person like there's still a real person inside of you right. that wants to be recognized so being able to come and be just who you are and be accepted you're you are a big piece of that puzzle. And I think that's really, really yeah, great. And yeah. your openness allows that. Amen. Yeah. Absolutely. I, like I said, I think that's one of the things that did it for me was, you know, being so broken and withdrawn and just the welcoming that I got when I got here, it changed channels in my head immediately. I said, yes, this is a place that's mm -hmm. going to, that's going to help me, you know, and it yeah. did. So, yeah. That's wonderful. Here we are. Mm-hmm. Well, man, I, I really appreciate you coming out, Ray. Thank you so much, dude, for, you know, for, for sharing. Thank you for your mm -hmm. transparency. You know, I, I, um, I was like, I was stressing last night. I was like, dude, he's coming <laughs> through. We got to make sure this sounds good. We got to make sure yeah. this is good. You know what I mean? Because I want everyone to hear it, man. So thank you very much, Ray. Thank I appreciate you. you, brother. I love you, man. And I'm, I'm so grateful for you. And thank you so much, brother, for being a part of the team. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, thank Very you for having episode, me. Very first episode, man. Very first episode, bro. It's, a, it's an honor. It's a it's a privilege and an honor. Oh, thank man. Go we'll Ark. Yeah. We'll arc. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, are, are we good? I think this this concludes, right? The very first. I feel first. like we should do like an arc. Oh, let's do it all day. Arc Hands in there. One, two, three. Bronco. Our cast. <laughs> Our cast, most definitely. Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, man, um, Thank you for, for listening and thank you for being a part of this. We have many more to come. We'll see you next time. Yes, God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.
What's going on, everybody? This is Buddha from the Rcast, and I just wanted to thank you for checking out this week's episode. It means a lot, and if you could share it with a friend or a loved one, somebody you need in recovery, or maybe somebody who just needs that little bit of extra positivity in their life, we'd greatly appreciate it. If you would like to join us here on the Rcast, either in the studio live or online, hit us up. The links are down in the show notes of this episode, and on there, you can find direct links to our main website here at America's Rehab Campus and all of our social media platforms. Follow us. We keep the posts positive and motivational, focused on recovery, health, and wellness. As you know, in this modern day and age, we need as much love as possible, y'all. And as always, if you or somebody you know is in need of substance abuse treatment, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We're open 24 hours a day, and our direct phone number is 1-833-272-7342. Once again, that phone number is 1-833-272-7342. I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day. Much love, and God bless. Peace.